Your drug dealer's never your friend. Will you help? Let oh. help me, man. It's Wheezy. Dude, I hate babies so they're allowed to wear their underwear out in public and I'm not. I don't want to be here anymore. I don't know. Maybe like they're allowed to poop themselves in public, but I can't. I like this place. Oh, Summer, did I tell you I passed my drug test? Flying colors. Yeah! Nice. Look at yes, you. Yes, sir. When did you get so old? Yeah, yeah it's fucked up, sir. right? I know that it's not illegal run. out there, but yeah, it creates illegal. I know that it's. <laughs> <laughs> I am high right now. <laughs> yeah, you're talking to well, at least three people that are high right now. <laughs> I should not do weeds on any chance, no. <laughs> there is no chance for me to do weeds or something like that. I don't know how it makes you feel. Is it like feel like that you're drunk or something? It's uh, like, have you ever been like terrible? <laughs> what? I was gonna say it's not like that at all. It's not like being kicked. It's like it's like uh <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually it's surprisingly easy. They just took me up to through the uh through the front doors. They took me up to the counter and they're like, uh what's going on? And they were like, Yeah, we're trying to admit our son to the mental hospital and they're like, Okay, what's the problem? And then they filled out some paperwork and then I was in in like ten minutes. Then they just give you a room and they're like, if there's somebody already in there that's your roommate and then when i saw i had one i was like damn well i guess this is another thing i have to deal with and then he turned out to be all right he didn't talk and he didn't bother me at all he was like completely silent the whole time so the only thing i knew about him was i asked somebody and they were like oh he likes football i think and i was like hey you like football or whatever and he's like didn't say anything just nodded at me and then i would just sit there silently next to him try to hang out with him every now and then and then whenever we had to go do something i just wouldn't say anything and then go and then by like the second day of me doing that he started like following me around and like hanging out with me and stuff but he never talked to me and then he got out i think a day before i did and then the first time anybody heard him talk he just looked over at me and he's like hey man it was really cool hanging out with you i hope that you're not like here again and then he just left one guy came up to me and was like when did you get here i was like nervous because i thought he was going to cause trouble but he, he turned out to be the coolest guy in there that i've ever met he was like my best friend by the time i got out my friend there i mean probably don't have to like bleep out his name but his name was kai he had like some long ass hawaiian name that he told me he could have lied to me about it and he turned out to be really cool they had no color on the walls everything was white all the lights were too bright the part that i was in is everybody under 18 they go there and then once you hit 18 you're thrown in with all the adults it was like school if you just cut out all the classes and made everybody sit in one room full schedule would be like wake up vitals breakfast free time for like two hours recreational activity another two hours of free time and then jim brought out a bunch of like balls and shit and they were like go ham <laughs> You were having a bad time, you can request talk to a therapist, but that was only occasionally because they were so understaffed. The first person I talked to, they just had to like write it all down for paperwork. So I just told them whatever, and I just gave them like the normal answers that like make me sound like I don't have problems. And they were like, yeah, we'll probably keep you in here for a week. And I'm like, oh, a week? That still kind of sucks. And then the second person I talked to was a lady. Instead of giving me therapy, she honestly told me like, yeah, don't do this, don't do this. Oh, and also like this one kid, don't touch him, don't look at him. She just gave me advice instead of therapy. She told me not to talk to uh, the guy who turned out to be my best friend because he caused trouble a lot, apparently. They also told told me about this other kid he was like six foot tall and apparently he had like some kind of learning disability so like he had the mind of like a like eight year old old or something but he was huge and was like strong as heck so if he got mad he would just lash out and they were like yeah just don't bother him he'll just do his own thing if he wants to sit somewhere just move out of the way there was one time he started having an episode and jumping and punching the roof. He was like breaking out ceiling tiles and pulling them down and then he broke like a bunch of lights. And they had to get like six different people to like hold him down and give him tranquilizer. And when my friend and his other friend saw that they were giving out tranquilizer, they were like, Hey man, if you act like you're going crazy, they'll just give you 
tranquilizer and we can be high on tranquilizer and i'm like that's a bit much for me but okay then my friend kai was like hey man i don't feel good i feel like i'm gonna freak out or whatever and he was like you just want the tranquilizer don't you and he's like i'm gonna freak out and he's like fine lay on the bed took this long ass syringe put it in their ass cheek gave them tranquilizer and then they were high and then they both slept for like 16 hours yeah if i were in that scenario i'd probably do that yeah, that was like the most the interesting thing that you can do. Alcoholic. What the fuck makes you think I'm an alcoholic? <laughs> I don't know, just like the way you talk on it. Bitch. I was working a late shift after school at Wendy's senior year of high school. I came home one night and my dad was like waiting for me and he was just like, you're not been following the house rules or whatever. I'm like, well, your house rules are dumb. And I just worked an entire late shift at Wendy's. So can we talk about this later? And then he got mad and I was like, eh, I don't care. And I went to bed and then the next day, Actually, no, it wasn't the next day. It was the same fucking night. He came into my room and he was like, all right, we're sending you to the mental hospital. And I'm like, why? He's like, you're scaring your stepmom. And I'm like, why? I just go to school and work. What am I doing? And then he was like, yeah, we're going to take you to a mental hospital. I was like, well, fuck, okay. That was their reason. They were like, you're scaring your stepmom because you look at her like you don't like her. And I'm like, I don't like her. That was their whole reason. She was just scared of me for some reason. Dark clothes, skinny white boy. Listen to my chemical romance. I guess that was scary enough. At the time, you know, you're in high school, you like going through your rebellious phase. And honestly, my rebellious phase wasn't even that bad. I just skipped classes sometimes and like hung out with my friends after school a little too late. My stepmom was like on my ass all the time. And I think he just gave up because she was always on his ass all the time. And he was like, yeah, I'll just like, I don't know what to do anymore. I'm working all the time. I'll just. I'll just send you off because I don't know what to do anymore. She won't shut up. She came in whenever I was like 13. So I was like already half grown. So I was like, I don't need another mom. Came home from Wendy's shift. They dropped me off in the mental hospital. They were like, yeah, we'll bring you a change of clothes in the morning. And it all happened in like the span of like two hours. It was crazy. Usually you can't get uh, like admitted to those places unless you're like a danger to yourself or others or something. I think I was 17, so they accepted me into the hospital because my parents said I was a danger to my family, which was not true. I think that he just wanted me in there for like a week or something. Woke us up every day at 5 in the morning to do like blood pressure checks. And they didn't serve breakfast until 7, so fuck that. That was horrible. Wait, did they do that every day? Yep, every single day, 5 in the morning. I think it's really just if your parents think you're gonna kill yourself they just throw you in there yeah this will this will kind of just like blow over in a week whenever you get out really just felt like you're just supposed to stay there for a while and then like it'll pass i don't know about other states or even countries if they have this similar thing but in alabama it was horrible couldn't wear hoodies or sweaters because the sleeves were too long you get your trash up with it you couldn't have shoelaces so if you had laced shoes going in there you had no laces to keep the the shoes on your feet at lunchtime we would take the plastic wrapping off of the silverware and we would like turn it into string and then like tie our shoes up with the plastic from the lunch silverware it was funny. my god and my friend kai wanted his like hoodie that he had when he was in high school his drug rug hoodie smelled so dank when he got it but they had him like cut off the sleeves and like the hoodie what the and like fuck? took out the string. <laughs> we actually got in trouble one time because have you guys ever played Mercy? Lock both of your hands together and then try to like bend each other's fingers backwards. Yeah, we got in trouble for playing that one time because he was huge and he was like, oh, are you strong? And I'm like, I don't know, maybe. I ended up almost beating him, but the doctors had to had to stop us there. Like, hey, hey, you guys can't like be touching each other and stuff, you know, like regulations and whatever. I almost won. If they would have let us kept going, I would have beat him in Mercy. <laughs> We were friends in the mental hospital, and that was it. We knew we weren't going to ever talk to each other again. He tried to give me his socials, like a bunch of people there, but I could never find them, so I think they lied. Everybody there was always like, we're friends now, but if I ever see you in here again, like, we're not going to be friends next time because everybody just wants you to get out and stay out so you're, like, healthy and stuff. So we never talk to each other again unless we see each other there. Which I never went back, so I would just, like, admit myself again and be like, hey, man, you ready for round two of Mercy? Um, they told me I was gonna leave like the day of called my parents. I waited there I was saying goodbye to everybody and then I started walking out with all my stuff saw my parents Which is probably the worst part of it I wasn't ready to just go back to like normal life on the way home They were like do you want anything and I'm like yeah just stop at a gas station and get me a peace tea So I was like addicted to peace teas in high school. I don't know if you guys know what those are You like the snowberry one?
Bro, Snowberry is so good. So good. I don't know, it was kind of a weird experience because I had gotten used to living there, and now I knew I had to like go back to normal work and school and everything and actually had to worry about real life stuff. It didn't teach me a whole lot about mental health. I did actually learn a lot about confidence, if that makes sense. I figured out pretty quick, you're just confident and you just seem unbothered or like just really chill. A lot of people will just like really interact with you. <laughs> that first day there, that was definitely when I was actually feeling bad, but I had to hide it. After you got out, did you talk to your stepmom? Actually, no. She uh, didn't talk to me like at all after I got out. Like everything she communicated to me, like she had to tell my dad. And then my dad would be like, hey, she's like saying this, doesn't want this or whatever. I think the last interaction I had with her, she looked at me and then my dad told me that I was being like sent off to Colorado to live with my mom instead. And my dad had found out that I'd been talking with my mom because they had been divorced like my whole life. So then my stepmom was like, he's got to go. Once they found that out, they were like, you can go live with your mom. That was the last time I talked to both of them. I was sent away and I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll go live my life. And I haven't talked to either of them since. I think it's been six years. Yeah, six coming up on seven years. Has your dad ever tried to reach out? No, he doesn't. Because I think he had like two, three more kids. He's also stubborn as heck. <laughs> so he's not going to reach out first, I don't think ever. But I mean, I've moved on, so it doesn't bother me much. Oh shit, is this the big question? If you could tell everybody in the world one thing, what would it be? Don't try to be somebody you're not. It's just way too stressful. You just be yourself. The real people will just accept you. You don't have to try to be somebody else. If the CIA, I've been practicing being homeless lately, so I've just been sleeping outside in random spots. So like, if the CIA ever comes to kill me, I can 